Uh, there's a slide here that talks about and summarizes a number of different um, blood pressure medications, the antihypertensive drugs that cause coenzyme Q10 depletion. And then I move into a slide that talks about the statin drugs. They are one of the biggest classes of drugs that deplete coenzyme Q10. So I want to spend a little minute, a few minutes talking about coenzyme Q10. It was discovered in uh, the 1950s. A year after it was discovered, a gentleman by the name of Carl Folkers, who worked for the, the pharmaceutical giant Merck Sharp and Dome, was able to extract small amounts of coenzyme Q10 from 10 tons of beef hearts. With the small amount of coenzyme Q10 that he was able to extract and get to work with, he did some preliminary studies and he found out he had a blockbuster cardiovascular drug on his hands. So he went to his superiors at Merck Sharp and Dome and said, man, have I got a new cardiovascular drug for us. His superiors were totally uninterested because they, Merck Sharp and Dome, had just launched their new blockbuster blood pressure medication called Diuril. And if they just launched a new cardiovascular drug, they didn't want to put money into marketing another one that's just going to compete with their own blockbuster drug. So Merck was totally uninterested in coenzyme Q10. The patent rights were sold to the Japanese. The Japanese took about 10 years to develop recombinant DNA methods of having bacteria produce the coenzyme Q10. Then they were able to get significant quantities of CoQ10, start clinical trials, and in short order, the Japanese actually were able to see that coenzyme Q10 is one of the most successful cardiovascular drugs that's ever been invented. For many years, for probably about three decades, co coenzyme Q10 was one of the top three cardiovascular drugs in Japan. A few years ago, it came off prescription drug status and became over-the-counter, and that caused an increased demand, which made the worldwide price go up because there was more demand and not enough supply. Let me say a few things about what coenzyme Q10 does. Coenzyme Q10 has two major, major attributes. It's a powerful antioxidant. It's a fat-soluble antioxidant. So it gets in across the fat-soluble, the, the fatty cell membranes and inside the cell. It's a powerful antioxidant. And secondly, it's a critical nutrient in what's called the electron transport chain reaction of producing energy. So in the process of producing energy in the cells, electrons have to be transferred down the line. And electrons, if they get away, a single electron is a free radical. So it turns out that we produce most of the free radicals in our body at the cellular level in the mitochondria during the process of energy production. So coenzyme Q10 is really critical now. It's required for energy production in the mitochondria, and that's the place where we produce and generate the most free radicals. Well, coenzyme Q10 is also a really critical antioxidant, so it's right there where it's needed to prevent these free radicals from getting loose and doing cellular damage. The next chapter in the story is a clinician in Australia who has a new theory of the aging process. This gentleman says, the main cause of the aging process is a lack of energy at the cellular level. Well, if you are deficient in coenzyme Q10, you won't have the antioxidant protection in the mitochondria where energy is produced, so you'll accelerate free radical damage in the DNA in your mitochondria. Now, it turns out that we have two different types of DNA. The DNA in the nucleus of our cells we've known about for well over half a century. But a number of years ago, the scientists discovered that we have a different type of DNA in our mitochondria. And the significance of this is that in our DNA, in the nucleus of our cells, we have a very extensive network of DNA repair enzymes. So if you get free radical damage in the nucleus of your cell, these free radical, or excuse me, these um, DNA repair enzymes kick into gear and repair the damage. Turns out we don't have this extensive network of DNA repair enzymes in our mitochondria. 
So we have a situation where if your coenzyme Q10 deficient, you don't have the antioxidant potential in the mitochondria to sop up and neutralize the electrons where most of our free radicals are produced. So coenzyme Q10 deficiency means you will have much more free radical damage to your mitochondrial DNA where we don't have the enzymes to repair the damage so your cells can't produce energy and that's the leading theory now on the aging process. Cells can't produce energy, cells die, tissues die, organs die, the host dies. So coenzyme Q10 is absolutely the most critical nutrient for slowing down the aging process. I can't tell you how many people I've counseled in drugstores who are picking up medications that I know deplete coenzyme Q10 and I suggest that they start taking coenzyme Q10 and in six or eight weeks they come back and they say, you know, I feel like I got more energy. You will have more energy. Coenzyme Q10 is required for energy production and especially if you're taking a, a drug that depletes coenzyme Q10, you'll notice a difference. Okay, um, what else do I want to say about coenzyme Q10? Um, it's a fat-soluble nutrient, and we don't absorb our fat-soluble nutrients very efficiently. So you'll get optimum absorption of your coenzyme Q10 if you take it at your largest meal where you have some fat digestion going on. The other thing I tell most people when I'm talking about coenzyme Q10, and especially if I'm encouraging somebody to purchase it as a, a supplement, the only side effect of coenzyme Q10 therapy is poverty. It's fairly expensive, but it's absolutely one of the most important nutrients to know about. And I try to get everybody to take at least 100 milligrams a day, but whatever your pocketbook can afford. So what would you say if you can afford it? Uh, especially if you're 200 milligrams is a good place to be at. Um, 300 milligrams probably a little better. There, I follow this literature fanatically. Um, there's a study with uh, prostate cancer in men, 600 milligrams a day. In some of the neurological diseases now, they're using 1,200 milligrams a day, no side effects. Um, people taking 1,200 milligrams a day are not paying for it themselves. They're in a clinical trial and they couldn't afford to take that much themselves. But um, there are no side effects that have been reported from coenzyme Q10 that I've ever seen. I don't think it's probably a good idea to take massive amounts, I think moderation is appropriate, but two, three, four hundred milligrams a day I think are fine levels to be at. And I'm, I'd, I'd say my, my target range for most people would be two to three hundred milligrams. Coenzyme Q10 is a naturally occurring nutrient. The reason it's called coenzyme Q10 is that every living thing on the planet makes some form of coenzyme Q for energy production. Plants, butterflies, mammals, everybody, everything. The form of coenzyme Q made by humans is coenzyme Q10. We don't get it from the diet. We make it at the cellular level. But the, the biosynthetic process of making coenzyme Q10 is a very complex 17-step process that requires lots of different <coughs> vitamins and minerals as cofactors. In this day and age with fast food, diets and factory farming and so forth, marginal nutrition is the norm. I would say most of medical, middle America has, has multiple borderline nutritional deficiencies. And so any of those nutrient deficiencies can have a negative impact on your body's ability to synthesize coenzyme Q10 at the cellular level. So good question, thank you. And he published a, a study on dose-related coenzyme Q10 decline, studying a couple of different statin drugs at different dosage levels, and basically what he reported is that the higher the dose of the statin drug, the greater the depletion of coenzyme Q10. Um, pravastatin and lobostatin, anywhere from a 20 to almost a 30, 28.8% decline in coenzyme Q10 level. And in this study, this clinician told us something else very, very important about coenzyme Q10. He said, <coughs> coenzyme Q10 is an essential agent in energy production, and in his words here, an endogenous antioxidant, an internal antioxidant, 
packaged into LDL and VLDL fractions of cholesterol. And it is an important protector against atherosclerosis. This clinician is pointing out to us that the fat-soluble coenzyme Q10 is transported around our bodies on the LDL and VLDL molecules of cholesterol. And the real problem with cholesterol is not the LDL cholesterol, it's when it gets oxidized. Then it becomes a deranged molecule and can start the process of cardiovascular disease, of atherosclerosis. So with coenzyme Q10 being this powerful antioxidant, if it gets carried around the system on LDL cholesterol, its antioxidant capacity will prevent LDL cholesterol from getting oxidized and it's one of the most important things to prevent one of that particular cardiovascular disease risk.